this museum is your museum. This is a people's museum, not a corporate museum. It's us, and we're glad to have you with that. The program can go on. The old African-American doctor. This is an old African-American doctor, clever-minded, sharp and tight, confident, never seemed to worry, and that's an actual fact. Thinking, working, serving people, daily from place to place, joyfully returns to family, a big smile on his face. Message written or verbally spoken, however, he conveys the message seems like ours, just waiting to hear what he would say. Small town African doctors, steady skillful hands, wisdom, caring thoughts, bringing hope and peace to man. The ailing, undisposed, diseased, lay weary, weak, and unwell. Body and mind, distempered, disordered, feeble, sick, and frail, brings hope to friends and family, whom sit anxiously in wait with utmost confidence, optimist, faith, no fear to have to take. A cheerful smile, a pleasant expression upon the doctor's face as he entered into the waiting room, the designated place. His joyful message, verbally spoken, cheerful, it cheers us on our way. Linus were like I was just waiting in that waiting room to hear what he would say. We give thanks to these old African American doctors and praise our God above for caring thoughts, skillful hands, and unconditional love. This clever, old African doctor, steady hands and mind intact, excellent, skillful, praiseworthy, resulting with the greatest of impact. We need ourselves to know ourselves. And that was the origin of this museum. And it's been going for four years, and we hope it'll go 400 years. Because we need, if we don't know about ourselves, we don't know anything. And so, this is a community museum, and why would we call it a community museum? Because we don't ask for grants. Grants are like prison. You owe someone something because they give you something. We want to owe the community. And you know, we've had a lot of struggles our foreparents have gone through a lot that if we don't read and learn our history, we won't know how to appreciate them. <coughs> you know, they suffer many things that we don't have to suffer and go through with now. So we should learn a legacy and try to leave a legacy here for our children and for our grandchildren. When you die, what will your legacy be? What will your legacy be for the, for the world, for your children, for your grandchildren? You need to leave some kind of legacy for them. But the big thing is, we're so happy to see you. We're so happy the community to come together and to see what kind of talent we have before us. We mm -hmm. want to keep it developing. Mm -hmm. And we want to build a community. We can change this community. Yes, we can. Yeah. But we can only change it if we love it. And of course, working with the museum with Dr. Jackson and the board here and all the volunteers, I just got, I have gleaned so much, and I, I'm just really excited about what the museum is doing. What I want to say is this woman over here was one of the hearts of the civil rights movement here. Yes, sir. She came out of a little country village, she's not too far from here, never seen us, she claimed. When she saw us, she knew to, to do the right thing. Yes, sir. A reader picketed, reader did poetry, and, and did all kinds of things during the Civil Rights Movement. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know her heart's still there, that's why she's here. But I just had to jump this because she's close to my heart. Oh. Uh, this is About a few years ago, a few of us sat down and said, what can we do for the community? You know, we started that museum um, 
he was really the driving force. Yes. Dr. Jackson. Dr. Jackson excites all of us volunteers <laughs> and everybody that works in that museum. That really because helped. he's just so uh, geeked, I would call it, you know, all the time. I, I never see anything negative about what we're doing there. Mm -hmm. Because him being the CEO, he have to have that driving force in order for us to catch on. So we've caught on. We never said no. Or, or we never brought up, you know, well, how are we going to do it? We said, okay, let's go to work. That's uh, right. I think that's an important thing. You know, when you want to do something, if you bring up all the things you can do, yeah. it stops you from thinking of the things you can do. Mm -hmm. and, that's the and that's still the attitude we have. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know your history, and that doesn't go for the black African-American people. That human go for race. the entire human race. Yes. You gotta know your history. Right. And I've been with them, you know, from the very beginning. And how long has it been? Do you recall how long? Uh, 2006, I All believe. Right. We want you to come and visit us, and if we want your pennies, we want your dimes, and we want your heart. Right. And, and you won't turn down the dollars either, will you? No, oh, no, oh, no. no. And people come Ooh, forward, you'd yes, be surprised. Right. People Ooh. give ten and twenty dollars yeah. that yeah. can afford it. Right. But we want anyone who can come uh, to come. Mm -hmm. And I think we're really grateful for you to come and say what you can say, because I think you're a blessing to all of us. Yeah. Uh, 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 being here, it gives us a lot of hope and pride, uh, 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 especially uh, into black folks, that one of our own can survive this long, can walk, can talk, can say I don't remember, and, and give us some of your ideas. Mother Banks, Mother Banks is in such a good shape, the way she looked, the way she carried herself. And I think if a young man would come along and be the right kind of person, Mother Banks might have said yes. Yeah, to what? Think that's going to happen. Think that's going to happen. What you say, Mother? That ain't going to happen. I don't think that's going to ever happen. You don't think that's going to ever happen? I'm just saying what you can. But this woman is amazing. Yes, she really is. Uh, and uh, to live. To be a hundred is, is a, a, a blessing that most of us at this time don't have That's uh, right. here. And we're so pleased, uh, Mrs. Banks, that you came in, in, uh, to us and talked to us. It, it's, it's just something that's rare. And we're going to put you all over the TV. And we want hope. Uh, Gloria or somebody can get you and bring you to the museum and see you talking. And you can wave to yourself. Thank and uh, we really appreciate it. This is a service to the community. And this is the inspiration that we want the community to see. That we have elders around here that are up in the sky and still functioning. And may you have many, many blessings. And may, when you get another birthday, may we come back. And, and uh, uh, I can't say really more than what I've said. And thanks again. And you know, the Bible does say that um, the Lord didn't give us but 80 years. By reason of strength, some live 80. He didn't give us but 70. And he said, and in the scripture it said, by reason of strength, some live 80 years. But you done passed that. You know, so you've really been blessed. God loves you. He really takes care of you. Now I'm going to tell you something that I heard on the TV a couple of years ago. They was interviewing another uh, lady. She was a Chinese lady. And they was asking her about her longevity. She was 103. And um, she told them that she had a lover. He was 79. And she was 103. And she said her longevity, she contributed to good diet, sex, and uh, ex exercise. 
So you is on you just you just one hundred and two. You ain't one hundred and three yet. So she said you're still you. young. So you still young. Yeah. <laughs> nothing to get over clothes. <laughs> <laughs> that That's right. <laughs> I told you. Ain't nothing to get over clothes. Come on, mother, you got that right. And when they get too old, you can get rid of them. <laughs> well, the museum really appreciates you. And I know the, the people will appreciate you for taking your time out and to come That's right. and talk with us and give us some knowledge that we wouldn't have had if you didn't come here. So we'll see you at 103. Let me ask you this. Do you like being black? Yeah. Why? Because I'm black. <laughs> what you have in your head will never be on book. Mm -hmm. And so we want to put it in this museum so people can get the thoughts and ideas of some of the past. Mm -hmm. Because we always feel uh, if we know the past, we don't make the same errors over again. Mm -hmm. And we got to know the past of our people, which is in our land, mm -hmm. and the young people know that this didn't just open up and here we are, mm -hmm. that the struggles of people like you came here, worked hard, and had faith in yourself, mm -hmm. in, in in your surrounding community. And we, th we thank you very much for coming because you're going to be in this museum mm -hmm. and, and it's not like being in a funeral home. <laughs> it's even not like being in a church. It's the people's um, place that mm -hmm. can come in and, and see what's happening, mm -hmm. think about it, and give them some thoughts to go on. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thank you very much for coming. Yeah, you're welcome. Sometimes it's a struggle. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and if we don't struggle to help change it, you know, in that struggle is a lot of love. And mm -hmm. if we don't struggle and put that love in there, then people don't seem to want to change so much. And uh, and that's that's a big problem when you're dealing with a lot of people how you can get to love each other so they want to help each other. Because you're not, you're not only part of the old, but you're also in the new. Well, we I appreciate it very much. I commend you for getting this, doing this. Yeah, but you've been an inspiration. You, I know you didn't do it by yourself. I know you had a, you know, people helping you. Yeah. But uh, I'm real proud of this. Thank you. When I finished interning, then I looked for a house, and any place we went, they said they uh, uh, they always asked what color. Mm -hmm. And if we we talked to them over the phone, and we we asked what color you want, mm -hmm. and and things like this. Uh, we worked on problems at the hospital, and fortunately, we got them solved. It, it became my journey of joy with aggravations I didn't want. <laughs> and so, uh, and I was determined that I would, since I had gotten my degree and I had finished school and finished my internship, that I had to be a responsible citizen in the community. So I started talking to some people. We convinced him that it was not the Urban League that was, could do it, but that we as citizens could get out and do it. So we began to form a group. And we talked among each other and explained uh, 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 and uh, gave ideas. And we took those ideas and we said, let's start doing something. Mm. And so we went down and started demonstrating. And the, and the community had a fit. We took picket signs and walked downtown. And, and the paper blew it up like we had, we were here with an army or something. And uh, then the town started being aware of the way it was. Mm. And when we, and we 
we always loved Lake Michigan when we came in here. It was really, we really fell in love. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I wanted to open an office where everyone who wanted to come to me would be available to come. So I opened it downtown, right? Uh, uh, basically in the women's club in that area. And I stayed there for 20 years. Oh my goodness. And, and uh, so I fell in love with, you know, with the people of Muskegon area. You know, when you work and struggle with people, you get a bond that you normally do not get. Okay. And that happened. So, you know, my heart was really with the people, mm -hmm. but uh, the people have to learn that their hearts have to be with people too. And so that was part of the struggle there mm -hmm. he, uh, that occurred here. Uh, had Muskegon changed to a degree, but change only keeps coming if you keep struggling with it. It doesn't happen where you do human change. You just don't do something and it takes care of the situation. We have, we human beings have a way of reverting back to what we shouldn't be. Absolutely. And, and so uh, uh, we've been struggling. And remember, uh, we had a, a big size civil rights movement here and I'm proud to say we never had a riot. Oh, we never a had a, Maybe at times we needed one, but we didn't have one. And so, <laughs> so that, we were kind of proud of that. Mm -hmm. And so that was my experience to start living in Muskegon. And I've been in practice ever since then. That's been about 50 years. Oh, and I've, a lot of it's been joy and a lot of it's been sorrow, but the big joy is to struggle with the population and see the change that you can make. And this museum comes out of the development of the civil rights movement, mm -hmm. that uh, a group of people, including myself, uh, begin to realize what else can we do to really continually make the kind of progress we should have, and we felt knowledge. Mm -hmm. Knowledge is the basis of progress. Ideas make the knowledge uh, 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 come alive. And uh, you've had, through all of your struggles and uh, all of the contributions that you have made to the community, uh, to your practice, to people, civil rights, and, and uh, to the museum, it seems that you've had a lot of people that revere you and really do appreciate you, Dr. Jackson, and I'm, I'm one of those people. And I'm sure you have a lot of parishioners. Uh, I look uh, at your office. parishioners, once. I'm not in the church. A lot of, well, I'm sure you had a lot of um, patience. Patience, that's yeah. right, patience. Because I was in your office once and you had a um, large display of, of people that you had, you, you know, that you had served as their doctor and, and their children. Many of the people are in my church uh, that know you, and you had their children. You delivered a lot of babies, and we, we, we just, like to, just like to say that we appreciate everything that you've done. And for everybody that has volunteered and brought things into your museum, Dr. Jackson, I just, I just think they have to be commended. And we have a, um, we, we really have a good mixture of, of, uh, of, of uh, volunteers that work in the museum. Give yourself some credit too. I, I'm giving myself, I, I've been here too since we started. And uh, I'm just really elated on the progress here and all the things that have been done. And, and, and I, too, congratulate others as they congratulate us. And we do want it to continue. That's what love does. And that's what love does, yes. Thank you, and happy to be here, and have happy for you people to be here. You know, it, it's uh, two institutions in this country that haven't been shaken up by uh, uh, racism, and that's the church and the hospitals. And they're the two institutions that have been allowed to 
keep carrying on from the foolishness that they've been doing for years. So uh, we decided, well, we're going to give some of the history of what happened uh, in relationship to health care. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, and uh, uh, why what happened. This is, this is quite a phenomenon. I was thinking uh, about a month ago, is how did they get free? How did we let them uh, go without any uh, uh, pressure and that? So I said, we, we should at least talk about hospitals. And all of us are concerned, especially now when we're talking about socialized medicine, uh, uh, how we can really, as uh, uh, people of color get into the hospital and have some kind of power over our health care. And up to now we've had almost no power and very few uh, uh, of, of our cohorts can get into education. Medical school is like going to something sacred and, and, and you almost have to beg to get in there. And when you get in there you can't believe it. So that's why we have this here, and we felt we would bring this part of the museum history of talking about health care in relationship to people of color. People remember, you've seen what happened today. If you support us, more of this will happen. That's true. But we, if we don't have your support, we can't build around it. But if we got more support, we can do more. Yes. We can do more. Now remember this. Uh, this is for the whole community. Yes, sir. And if you have a group that's interested and you want to develop it, let us know. We'll help you support it. Remember, you have to support us. You got lights, you see the car, floor, <laughs> and, and so on. You just remember that there. We don't want much of what you got, but a little bit. Okay. <laughs> so remember that's going out. We appreciate it. And Dr. Baruti and uh, our dear nurse left. She had to leave. Uh, 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 she had to leave. Yes. But we appreciate you coming because uh, uh, we have information for you and we want you to have it and struggle with it. And, and we, if you can afford it, we'd like your donation before you leave for those who haven't given them. And thank you very much for coming. We're in this community. We've been in here for 10 years. And we hope we'll be here 10 years more. I don't know how, if I'll get that much out of life. But <laughs> something. I, I had an experiment. I don't want to do all the talking. Uh, of this last week where a state policeman came to, we call him, came to my house. And uh, that's the first policeman in a long time I had any respect. He handled himself beautiful. <laughs> you know, he shook your hand and, and said, you know, what the problem is and everything else. And he walked out to, out of the house with a smile. <laughs> and he said, said we'll take care of everything. <laughs> that's not been my habit. <laughs> I've seen the worst behavior in this country and policemen in the past. Mm -hmm. it, uh, and uh, most of them were white policemen. Mm -hmm. I mean, I went to the school at, at, at Wayne in Detroit, mm -hmm. and when they had the, remember they had that uh, 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 set up, what was it? That they had, uh, they were, uh, the squad were killing people. Stress. Stress, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. Oh, yeah. I remember stress. Yeah. Uh, they were all like six foot five. Uh, right. yeah, I think they were huge. Yeah. But anyhow, yeah. there, they stopped the guys right out, out of the uh, 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 dorm. And they stopped me and said, I will put your hands up. And, and I want uh, uh, identification. And I reached him out, don't put your hand in your pocket. <laughs> I, said, Wait a yeah. I said, how can I show you my identification? Shut up! <laughs> I, 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 thank goodness I didn't carry a gun, because if I had a gun, I would have blew him. Now you see what I'm trying to teach an officer of color.
cops not to do that. If you're black, you think about all these things happening. If you're white, you wonder, is that really me? And, and, and we both have a game to play, and we want a country. I mean, we don't want Russia. Uh, our president wants Russia. We don't want Russia. So we want to be American, but we wanted to be our American. Let me stop this speech. <laughs> Remember, we do not run these facilities without a donation. So whatever you have from a penny on up, uh, someone will be out there to collect it on your way out. And I want to tell you, I might you made my heart. And your people came here, and you know, I grew up in New England. I really didn't know what black folks were, you know, and everything else. And when I came to Detroit, I got bit, bit, bit. But I, I you know, the swords heal over, and I know what we are. So I don't, I don't know enough, but something enough to open the door and walk through. Um, this museum is a wonderful learning center. We, I have learned so much since I've been there for the, I guess, we opened in 2006. Some of our members are still around. And we had many who have joined us. They bring their children, their grandchildren, their families, and they learn a lot more than, even though she was a great woman, but we have to learn more than what Rosie Parks did. Amen. We have to learn a little more than what Dr. King did. Amen. But it's awfully important. They will teach them that in school. But you're not going to see a lot of the African American Museum history in the classrooms. So you need to bring your children there. And you need to let them learn of who they really are. We are all beautiful people. Oh my God. We are wonderful people. Ooh. You just look around and see the struggles and how we have been persecuted used, abused, and misused, and killed, et cetera, et cetera, go ahead and name it. And look at our progress today. It had to be a God on our side. Amen? Amen. It had to be a God on our side. Amen. And we want to thank all of our volunteers and all of you that have come today. We thank Dr. Jackson for opening up his heart to have something like this for all the community. And I, I, I haven't seen anything like this in Muskegon. So we, uh, we give you gratitude to Dr. Jackson and thank you for what you have done for this community and for the African American um, Museum. And now at this time, I just want to say that I want to thank the Lord for my family that's here too. Uh, Julie Turner. Uh, Beverly Johnson, both of those girls are retired school teachers for about 30 years. So I thank the Lord for them and all of you that have come. I invited others. Oh, and Mr. Cook, he came today too. I invited him. Amen. <laughs> so you got your music. All right. We just love you all and we thank the Lord for you. All of our good friends and well wishers and those that have volunteered and helped to make the museum what it is. All of the cooks and the people that volunteer. Let's give our, let's, amen, let's give. And I want you to also give our MC a hand, too. Now, this is the, I think I saved the best for last. The museum is a nonprofit organization serving our community since December 2006. Please consider the James Jackson Museum of African American History for a tax-exempt donation. And this, for this holiday season or any season, all donations are greatly appreciated. Thank you, and have a blessed Christmas. We love you. And is it anything else that you would like to let the community know or you want to say? 
before we, we close it out, but, but uh, we, we've enjoyed your... Join us. Join us. Uh,